All right, Brandy Rob, I see you. What's up, Ronda Cox? I got everybody, man. I appreciate it. We're going to crank up this 369 financial transformation here in a second. Thanks for joining us. Go ahead and get the watch party going because it's about to be on and popping. So what is what is everybody doing these days? We hitting uh, share, share, share. We hitting watch party. We hitting likes. We hitting all kinds of stuff, man. I don't know what the watch party is, but if it's a new feature, I got to learn it. All I know is we're about to party and talk about money today, tonight, and we're going to get done, or we're going to start in about two minutes, exactly two minutes. My name is Brian Bean, proud founder of Mentor 2 Millions Incorporated, where I basically teach people that there's no longer a secret to success. And what that means is, if you really want the secret to success, it's really tied up in your daily routine and hard work. But tonight, we're going to talk about finances. We're going to talk about getting money as an issue out the way. In 2019, we're going to talk about all these different things that I really think people missed that they didn't teach you in schools. We're going to pull the veil back a little bit and uncover the things that wealthy people do that people who are not as wealthy just don't do. And you know what it boils down to? A lack of education. When you think about it, wealthy people just know something that people without money just don't know. You know, and there's a big difference between being broke and being poor. I'll get into that when we actually get started. But I just wanted to, well, let me get into it now before I forget I've been broke before, man. I'm, I mean, down and out, right? I didn't know if I was going to rob Peter or Paul. So instead of them robbing me, I figured I'd rob them first. So people say, <laughs> robbing Peter to pay Paul. I was trying to rob Peter and Paul. And um, that's because I didn't have any money. But that was just broke. You know, if you don't have any money right now or the money that you want, that's just a temporary state of mind. That's not who you are. You're just in a, in a situation right now that could be better. Well, poor is a state of mind. Broke is a temporary situation. Poor is a state of mind. So what we're going to show you is not um, no, no longer how to think like a poor person thinks. If that's what you're doing, it's keeping your blessings from coming forward. But we're going to show you how to go ahead and get on the other side of money using strategy. So I'll be right back in exactly two minutes, two minutes and count. And my name again is Brian Bean. Go ahead and hit share if you're on Facebook, if you're on the webinar or Facebook. State your name and your city or just your city in the comments. And let's get the watch party going just like we did last night. All right. Get started in a second. I see you from Texas, Clarence Brown. I got you all the way. I see all you guys in Michigan on the webinar. I appreciate you guys for joining us, man. Get the watch party going. We're going to crank this thing up in 30 seconds. Exactly 30 seconds and counting. Douglasville, Georgia. I appreciate you guys for coming. Ricky, I see you. Ramon, I see you. Steve from Philly in the building. What's up, Philly? So I'm going to do, do something a little different tonight. Okay, so for the next four days, I'm doing these live webinars to kind of give people a better understanding on, people say, Brian, you, you made a million dollars in your 20s and was very, very blessed and fortunate to retire. Then I lost a million dollars. Where, like, where the hell did my money go? And then I got it back and started becoming more um, financially successful once I got my mind set about money and my strategies right in my 30s. So I want to share with you guys tonight different aspects of income shifting. Last night on Monday, you can go back and see on my timeline, you can go back and see some of the things that I stressed um, as it relates to inflation and taxes and debt and the calendar and how big business robs you of your wealth. Tonight, I'm going to focus on something a little different. So each webinar, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now, today is Tuesday the 15th. Dr. King's birthday. Happy birthday, Dr. King. I'm not even standing in front of this room talking to this beautiful audience if it were not for people like Dr. King and all the supporters and all the people who fought for the right for me to be here today. So definitely shout out to Dr. King uh, today. Being a Morehouse graduate with myself, he is a little extra something. But with that being said, today is Dr. King's birthday, Tuesday. I'm doing another one tomorrow night, which is Wednesday, and I'm doing another one on Thursday. And I'm going to give you different aspects of what my mentor taught me, who's earned over $900 million, I mean $600 million in business. Can you imagine that? Not six figures, not seven figures, not eight figures, but nine figures. I'm trying to think about that for a minute. So 
the the idea here, I'm going to do more talking than you have to worry about these slides and these different things. So don't worry about the visual if you can't really see it or if you're driving. But listen to what I'm saying because I didn't rebound and get back seven figures, net worth, income, uh, top 5% in the country because I was smart. I got it back because I followed a plan. And here's a good note for you guys to start with. If you don't have a plan for your money, somebody else does. So the question becomes, what's your money plan? What's your money plan? Plan. If you put your city in the comments and your and your, uh, where you're from, type that. What is my money plan in the comments? Because this society in this country will plan your money out for you, which means they're gonna take it if you don't have a plan in place already. So I'm gonna quickly go over some of the things I went over last night, Monday the 14th. If you missed it. It's on my personal timeline. You can go back and see those things. But I'm going to spend more detail tonight on how to kill the, the, what the number one income killer is in your life right now. The number one income killer and how to overcome that quickly. So in, as a recap, last night I talked about two financial objectives that everybody should have. Here's the shorthand. Here's the cliff notes. One, your current lifestyle is paid for by your job. Two, your future lifestyle was paid for with your investments. If you don't have any investments, that means you'll be working for the rest of your natural life. You got to have some investments. You got to have something that's working for you. So you won't always work for money. Write this down in your notes or type it in the comments. Something has to work. Just not me. That's that's big. When I got that, that was another epiphany for me. Something has to work. Just not me. So if you're working for every dime, guess what? You'll have to work the rest of your natural life. You got to make up your mind right now, man. I'm not going to work until I die. That's just, that's just not going to happen. But most Americans, they work until they die. So you got to say to yourself, man, when am I going to start doing the traveling and things that I claim I'm going to do? How long have I been claiming that one day? Y'all, look, one day is today. I always tell people uh, I own a training company, so I do a lot of motivational speaking. And one of the lines I always open with is yesterday you were calling today tomorrow. That's what you were saying. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. Tomorrow I'm going to do that. Tomorrow I have to do this. Well, that was yesterday. Now, tomorrow you'll be calling today yesterday. So if yesterday you were calling today tomorrow and tomorrow you'll be calling today yesterday, then all you really have is today because yesterday and tomorrow are today. You are where you are today because of some mistakes you made yesterday and you're going to be where you're going to be tomorrow because of what you do today. So let's go ahead and make this happen. This, I'm not the Riddler, but that's just a, a profound thing I tell everybody and it'll make you think about time a little bit different. So if you don't have any investments right now, when will you ever? There's some people who no matter how much money they have, how little money they have, they still invest a little. And there's some people who no matter how much money they have, they invest nothing. So why is it that a teacher, an educator who may not make as much as a doctor or a lawyer can invest just as much and be just as wealthy than a lawyer who makes all this money without splurging? It's mindset. So you got to have something today called a job or a business that helps you generate the current lifestyle. And you got to have something tomorrow called investments so you won't work until you die. That's what you got to do. Now, there are four things we went over yesterday keeping you from making this happen. So each night this week, Monday through Thursday, I'm going to emphasize different things. We talked about inflation. The value of your dollar is dropping. If you don't believe me, $20 in gas 10 years ago took you to half a tank. $20 in gas today, same 20, same color, same paper. And you get the needle to move a half a, a milliliter because 20 bucks doesn't carry you like it used to. So it's the same paper. It's the same president. What happened? The dollar loses value because business owners determine how much things cost. So if they can always go up on their prices anytime they feel like it and there's no stopping it, then you got to be able to go up on your income. So your dollar's not worth as much as it used to be. You can see that with, with the grocery store, how many grapes you get per pound, right? <laughs> like, I know I got more than three grapes. You're like, well, not if they three dollars a pound. You know, three dollars a grape, right? So what you got to do is understand food. 
groceries, daycare, gasoline, healthcare, everything is up. So even when you get a cost of living raise, it doesn't feel like it because your money's down. You see? So it's a big, big difference. You get a pay raise and you're like, man, I got married. We should be doing better. No, because you forget this happens every day. Inflation happens 24-7. Your raise happens every 24 years. Okay? Taxes. This is the one I'm going to show you in a second. This is the emphasis tonight. The, the big elephant in the room is taxes. Now, people miss this. When I teach you these techniques tonight, we're not talking about tax evasion. People always bring up the worst scenario in the world. You know, man, Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Wesley Snipes. Wesley went to jail for them taxes. I'm not talking about Wesley Snipes. That's called a tax evasion. Lauren Hill, Willie Nelson. Look. We're talking about tax minimization, not tax evasion, all right? I don't mind paying my taxes. I, I want uh, the government to be able to have enough money to sustain certain government-regulated bodies. Here's what I tell people since our emphasis is taxes tonight. I want you to think about this. The FAA, right, controls the airways. When you fly an airplane, they got the coordinates, the towers, and everything else in place to help you go on this latitude this longitude, in other words, the space is regulated by the government. I need y'all to make sure I land safely, and I need to make sure these, these uh, air traffic controllers and everybody that works for the FAA gets me from point A to point B safely. You know what that is? Your tax dollars. If somebody break into my house and I don't catch them first, I need the police. You know what that is? My tax dollars. Right? So we have certain government regulations that we need to stay in place. So it's not about tax evasion. But here's my problem. Why are you overpaying your taxes? Why are you getting, we'll get to that in a second. Why are you giving away too much money and not having enough money when they already taken a third of your money? So the reason, again, most people don't have enough money to invest, the answer is simple. Your dollar loses value every day and then the taxes take a third of your money. Now we're going to talk about how to minimize taxes. Tax evasion is you don't even put on the return, right? When you file your taxes, you got money you didn't tell them about hidden somewhere overseas and then you told them you made this. That's tax evasion. So it's totally different. Wealthy people don't overpay their taxes. Third thing, debt. We went over this. Now, on my timeline, you'll see this in more detail last night. You just go to my um, timeline, scroll down, and you'll see January 14th. But debt is the third reason most people don't have enough money. Here's a question for you guys. Why are you paying for things two and three times? You ever thought about that? You bought one car, but by the time it's over, you paid for two. You went to school for four years, but by the time you paid student loans off, you went to school for 14 years. It's called interest. Interest. It's the penalty you pay for the right to own something in advance you cannot afford. That's what interest is. Now, let's get the watch party going, man. Get the watch party going. I'm telling you, let's go and have a, let's, let's make 2019 different. We, we party and, 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 and celebrate all New Year's, then you come in New Year's in the same financial situation. Let's get this watch party going. Let's go in and talk about these things because if people don't understand interest and how it can either work for you or against you, you'll always be broke. You'll always be broke. Here's what you have to remember. Anytime you hear the word interest, a loan is involved. Never forget that. Anytime you hear the word interest, a loan is involved. Let, let, me, let me show you something real quick. So take a second. Actually, oh, I can't do it. It's on my phone, but I, I'll show it to you guys tomorrow. So if the word interest, a checking account has interest, that means they're lending your money or they wouldn't be able to give you the little negative 1% interest you're getting. So when you hear the word interest, Credit card has interest. That means you're paying back more than you borrow because your money goes out into the eco, the uh, echo, and the atmosphere, if you will, or the economy. And now that money goes out into the economy. The extra interest on your credit card sends somebody else to school. The ex extra interest interest on your um, student loan sends somebody else car note. See, it's a big bundle of loans. They take the interest from all the consumers that are giving two and three times the amount and they make more money off your money. When you understand that debt is the enemy of your success, you will get out of, you'll get out of debt quickly. 
We have people that are going from the 500 credit score to 750 club. We got people going from no credit score at all to high 600s. You can get a house with over 670. You get a decent house with over 670, a decent house over 640. So a lot of times it's about doing small things to help change your whole financial situation. Let's get the watch party going. Let's get it going. All right. So the four things keeping you from succeeding so far. One, inflation, dollar dropping every day. Two, Taxes, money coming off the top of your check before you see it. Three, debt, more money going out and working for other people than working for you. And four is big business. Man, this here, this is what we call capitalism at its finest. Now, let me tell you why I say this. If you think about this, Every single month, there's something to celebrate. I want you guys to go see that on my webinar again on my timeline from yesterday. But there's always a holiday. Here comes Valentine's. The, as soon as Christmas was over and New Year's was over, they already had the teddy bears and the pink hearts on the shelves. So what you got to say to yourself is, you know what? And this is, a, this is an epiphany I want everybody to have. I want you to think about this for a minute. None of the things I'm talking about are bad if you're on the right side of them. Inflation is good if your house inflated. So if you got your house for $290 and today it's worth $380 and that $110 in equity, guess what that is? Inflation. See, inflation is not bad if you're on the right side. Taxes aren't bad if you got your money in a municipal bond and the local municipality and the taxes are giving you a return. See, there's nothing wrong with taxes when you're making money off of them. See, debt isn't bad if you are the lender and not the borrower. See, money is working for you because somebody didn't have enough money. So we show you and teach you how to put your money in certain areas that have um, interest rates higher than inflation. We're talking about Brian, I can't get no 10%. Who told you that? Oh, the person that don't want you to have it. <laughs> Brian, I can't get 14%. I can't get 17%. Um, I've gotten over 100,000%. See, you're taught to buy somebody else's investment. So they give you crumbs on a dollar. But you don't know. You, you were never taught to go out and get a 100,000% return on your money. You were never taught to go get a 10,000% return on your money. Those are the kind of things I'm going to show you right now. It's income shifting. But that's another webinar on that part. I just want to show you that part. Debt, big business, stop giving your money away, okay? Let's talk about the emphasis. Sales is cool. I spent the first 15 years of my life in sales. Very, very blessed to retire when I was 22, but lost a million dollars. Why? No strategy. Once I learned that I had to have a strategy, that's when I realized that it was a different game. You see? So the strategy side of the business is what I'm going to show you tonight. And I'm going to show you the pink elephant in the room. So write down this concept or put this in the comments. I must shift my income. That's the key. That, that's the eye opener that you have to have in 2019. You got to shift your income. You got to stop listening to people who have less money than you give you their opinion so that you can end up exactly where they are. You see, you, the minute I stop listening to people who have less money than me, my income shot through the ceiling. I want to be the brokest person in the room. Now, if I'm in the top 5% income earners in the, in the country and I'm the brokest person in the room, then I got to be around some heavy hitters. I got tired of being around people where all we talked about was what we didn't have. I, I want y'all to think about the conversations you're having right now. Think about it. I got to get my hair done. Me too. I'm waiting to Friday. That's when I get paid. Fellas, I want this. You know, I got tired of, look, guys, y'all don't know nothing about this. I, when I was coming up, broke as a joke, I did what's called sleeve shopping. You know what sleeve shopping is? Sleeve shopping is when you see the shirts you want and you see the suits you want. You see the jackets you want. But instead of looking at the clothes, looking at the shirt, jacket, and shoes, you look at the sleeve first. And then if the price is not what you want, you don't want, you don't want it no more. It was a dope jacket till you sleeve shop. So I would sleeve shop. Let me look at these sleeves first. Nah. 
Yeah, it, it ain't that nice. You see what I'm saying? I got tired of sleeve shopping. Now, I don't really go to the mall, right? I'm blessed enough to have somebody bring me the clothes. Why? Because I changed my mindset. But if I do go to the mall, I'm not sleeve shopping. I want that and that and that. Why? Because now it's about abundance. I'm rolling out a campaign this month called Freedom, Options, and Choices. It's going to kill you guys. You're going you're gonna to love it. Because you, you don't, nothing changes until you start giving yourself some freedom, options, and choices. you got to have it. you got to have it. You deserve it. You don't get it unless you start shifting your income, though. What does shifting your income mean? First, you got to increase your cash flow. Second, you got to open up a business with the cash flow that we help you increase. You start a home-based business, and then we show you how to get dividends, capital gains. We show you how to get appreciation on your money. Okay, that's called income shifting. Taking your money out the highest tax bracket, which is a W-2. That's the highest tax bracket. Nothing wrong with a job, but that's the highest one. Then you got to shift it through a 1099 because what the government does, they let you lower your taxes if you have a business. Now, why would they do that? Well, I want you to think about it. In their mind, the business owner is the one providing the opportunities. So if I have a business or if you have a business and you hire me, well, you're helping with unemployment because you have people working. So if unemployment is low, people are spending money because they're getting paid. Business owners are one of the reasons unemployment is low. So they give you a tax break. So the business owner's cash flow stays high so they can keep payroll going. They can keep orders coming in. They can keep inventory in the business. They can keep feeding families because if they don't, the people have to go see the government. So the government says, hold up, let's give the business owner a break. He or she can write off their cell phone and lower the taxes. Legally, ethically, morally. He or she can write off their internet and lower the taxes. Legally, ethically, morally. He or she can write off some square footage. So I, here in my office, guess what? This counts for some of the square footage. They take the total square footage of the house, carve, carve out my office, carve out my theater, carve out my training room, carve out my great room. You subtract that from the square footage, put in a formula, you get to write off that much in business deductions. Some of your utilities, some of your eating out, some of your meals and entertainment. Question, why don't you have a business? Answer, they didn't teach you to get one. It ain't hard, it ain't hard guys. When you little, they teach you to get a job. And then when you get older, they go, you should have got a small business. Well, hell, why didn't you tell me that 20 years ago? So income shifting is taking the tax savings that I'm going to show you now. Using that money to start a business that I'm going to show you now. Then you take the money from what we call strategy one. And two, because of the tax minimization, we out of debt. We snowball the tax savings into the debt, get the debt down to zero. Now you have enough money to invest. That's called income shifting. So what you got to do is hurry up and shift your income. Don't worry about anything else but that. Let's get the watch party going, man. Y'all me? Do I need to? What I need to do? Do I need to crank something up? Let's get the watch party going. So. Here's how. This is very simple. $49 one time, we teach you the strategies, the software, the system, and the success. It's $34.95 a month. Now you have a home-based business. People miss this. Back in 1970, Congress passed laws. In the 70s, they passed laws that extended the business owner's rights and privileges and deductions to the home-based business owner. So you don't need the brick and mortar that you used to have to have. You don't need it. Uh, in other words, back in the day, I had to have a building with a lease, you know, and all this stuff to get these big deductions. Well, Congress said, you know what? Let's pass those same benefits, and this is in the 70s, to the home-based business owner. So if the economy ever got bad, they could just crank up their home-based business. So let's give them the same deductions that we would give a traditional business owner. 
See, they want you to have a business so you can stay out of their pockets. It's a win-win. That's why they give you the tax break. So we teach you those strategies that you got to learn. Question. Why? This is the elephant in the room tonight now. I'll tell you, I'm doing these tomorrow and Thursday. Thursday will be 30 minutes later, by the way. It'll be 9, 9.30 on Thursday. But here's a question. Why aren't you hiring your children? I wait. Oh. Why aren't you hiring your children? We, some of us, have children, and we let them go get a job. Nothing wrong with a job. Nothing wrong with work. My son works for me. Why? Because... By law, I can pay him $12,000 with no tax implications at all. That's the cap. So I give my son, who's 15, $1,000 a month. Now, he doesn't get the money. Let me just make sure that's clear. It's put into his account. I'm the custodial. It's on payroll. It's documented. Why? He makes sure my office stays straight. Why? He hooks up my social media, these videos. Why? Why? When I do my conventions and my seminars, like March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, right now, put that in the comments. Be there or be square live. We're going to shut it down again at Game Changer. He helps me set up the equipment. He helps me take the equipment. He helps me take down the equipment. He helps me set up the stage, the chairs. He helps the DJ. He helps the audio guy. He helps my video guy. He helps all of those things. I pay him $1,000 a month. So, Dad, because of a $49 investment, is to take my gross income and subtract twelve thousand, and it stayed in the house. The income was legally, ethically, and morally shifted to payroll for my son. Now, when it's time to go to college, if he chooses, he's been working since he was three years old. See, these are the things we teach you. So, if I make 60,000, for example, I get to deduct 12,000. Now, instead of taxing me on 60,000, you tax me on 48,000. Because I didn't make 60,000. 12,000 went out in expenses to one of my employees. But no, not most people. They want to send their employees to McDonald's. Now, McDonald's, they want to send their children to McDonald's. Now, McDonald's get the tax write off. You see? Come on, man. Strategy. Some of y'all looking at this $49.95. $34 a month, we give you the strategy, all the software. These are the things I'm stressing tonight. The system and the success. A dollar and 17 cents a day. So watch this. This is the elephant in the room. Now, if you can't see this screen, don't worry about it. I'm going to read you something real quick. This is from the IRS website. Internal Revenue Service. Let's get the watch party going. Let's get it popping. Let's get it popping. The IRS says, this was over 15 years ago. Where does your refund come from? Because it's that time. Everybody's getting all excited. It comes from your wallet or purse when you tell your employer how much to withhold. Now, let me say this again. I majored in English. I got my degree in 1997 in English. I thought I was going to law school. God had another plan for me. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, did I just disappear? I'm sorry. Thank you. God had another plan. I didn't go to law school. But with my degree, here's what I learned. Re means again. Fund means money. A tax refund is your money again. So why do we celebrate a tax refund? Because they got everybody thinking that that's the biggest check they'll ever see once a year. So the IRS put this on their website. You might be using the extra refund as a forced savings, but Uncle Sam does not pay interest on refunds. Putting the money in any type of savings account or paying down debts might be a better option. Now, look, this is not Brian Bean. This is the IRS telling you. Why are you giving them, paraphrasing, a free loan? You might be using the forced, the extra withholdings that you let them keep as a forced savings method. This is their words. But Uncle Sam does not pay interest on refunds. So you're giving them a free loan. 
they go out, make money on it, then give you some next year back. And we go, woo, it's tax time. It's tax time. See, you have a watch party on that, but you, you won't have a watch party on this. You won't bring your friends around to learn this. It's tax time. It's tax time. Then you go out. What's the first thing you do? Pay your debt off that you got in? What's the next thing you do? Go buy something new that you've been craving? What's the next thing you do? Go out of town? Why? Because had you had your money during the year, you wouldn't even be in debt. Had you had your money during the year, you can take the vacation whenever you're ready. But you gave it to them in taxes, and then you wait on them next year. Man, how much can I get back? Get back? How much can I get front? I'm sorry, I'm starting to get a little aggressive. Get back? I'm just saying, it makes me a little mad. How much can I get front? Why am I getting something back? How much can I get up front? Brian, I'm going, oh, if you do that. That's what somebody taught you. You have a business that's totally different. So, what does this look like? This is called multiple streams of income. We're going to take the tax dollars. Let's say we save you $450 because you got a $50 business. We save you $450 in taxes. Now, we're going to take the $450. We're going to double down on your debt. So, instead of giving your car $450, we give them $900. The regular $450 and the new $450. Now, this is where people mess up. Man, I ain't giving the people $900. Yes, you are. You're giving it to people anyway. <laughs> it was going to the government and the banks. Now you're giving it to the bank to hurry up and knock it out and let the government pay off your car. Woo! Let the government pay off your car. Send them 900 Now the car note that you know you hate is gone in 18 to 24 months instead of 36 to 48 to 72. You see? you Now the car is gone. So you don't have any more credit cards because we snowballed that out the way. The tax dollars during the year paid that off. We took the credit card money, doubled down on the car note, paid that off. Now you'll have no car note, no credit card. Question. How much more money would you have if your debt was zero? If you owed nobody anything, how much more money would you have? That's deep. So, we're going to take the income from the business that I'm going to show you. Because you can introduce people if you choose to. You don't have to. And you can start earning residual income every month. So, if the business, the home-based business is bringing you, say, $1,000. You don't even have to hit it out the park. You got a $1,000 check coming every month. You got the tax savings. You look at your expenses and lower them. You got the debt money coming back in. The money has successfully been shifted back to you. Now let's get the watch party going. Let's get that watch party. At the end, I might even play some music. Now you got five streams of income, four of them dominoed into your investment account. Now you got some money. Now you don't have to wait on retirement. Brian, how did you retire at 22? Easy. I stopped giving everybody my money. See, if you want to be wealthy, anybody can be wealthy. But in order to do that, you got to first get your money back from the people that's stopping you from getting wealthy. So, here's what I want to specialize in tonight, and I am gone. Listen, type this in the notes. Excellent record keeping. Excellent record keeping. Excellent record keeping is this. We give you a tool called a cash flow manager. Now, what is that? The cash flow manager is a app that you keep on your cell phone. Now, you take this app, and when you go out to eat, for example, you take a picture of the receipt. You upload the picture. It says, is this an expense or income? It's an expense. You keep up with your receipts. Mileage. Eating out. Take a picture. The software from your phone then transfers online to a spreadsheet. They communicate. Your phone, which is connected to our app, your app is connected to your phone. Then the spreadsheet is connected to the software that you purchased for $34.95. I'll include it to $49 one time. $34.95 for the hosting and a whole bunch of other things we give you. Now, at the end of the year, you just print this out. 
or put it on a thumb drive and hand it to your CPA. You know what she's going to say or he's going to say? Thank you. Because everybody else brought me some envelopes with paper in them and I got to spend all night stacking them. You're like, no, here's my sheet. Here's my expenses. How much of my taxes can you lower now because I got a business? Now, if you don't have a business, you can't do this. If I don't have a business, I'm eating out, you eating out. Mine just go out the window. Yours lowers your taxes. If you have a business and I don't, I got internet, you got internet. Mine goes out the window. Yours lowers your taxes. More money for you. See, these are necessities, not niceties. These are necessities. I got a cell phone, you got a cell phone. Your cell phone bill lowers your taxable income. Mine goes out the door. So I'm getting hit twice. I got the expenses going out the door, internet, cell phone, eating out, gas, square footage, and I got the taxes. You got the same expenses, but not the taxes. Why do you keep getting hit twice? See, everybody want to sell their way, to, their way to wealth. Everybody wants to work their way to wealth. Put this in the comments. Work and wealth are not synonymous. Okay? And if synonymous giving you a hard time on the spelling, just put work and wealth are not the same. Okay, so I don't know how to spell it either. That's why in anonymous. So the sheet is then printed out or put on a thumb drive, and voila, your taxable income comes down. You just have to keep excellent records. You don't have to be a CPA. Brian, what can I write off? What can I not write off? It's in the app. If you scroll down the app and it's not in there, you can't click it. Chances are you can't write it off because it was our app was done by an IRS auditor. So it's audit proof. So if it's in the app and you scroll, oh, there's some stuff I can write off, then go for it. So now that the taxes are down and you're excited, you can share that with people and we earn checks every week. We get paid direct deposit every Friday. Now, you don't have to share the business and that's okay. But believe it or not, you can do things like this, like plug them into me. Plug them into me tomorrow. I'm doing the same thing tomorrow at 9 o'clock. I'm doing the same thing 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. I'm doing the same thing Thursday at 9.30. Make a note. So now you start getting checks. I was fortunate enough to be the first person to earn a five-figure check for one week's worth of work. And what? Can you imagine? You get $10,000 for it was about seven to ten days worth of work. I made $10,000. My job that I worked out of college wouldn't have gave me $10,000 in three months. But that's my, my point to everybody. If you shift your mindset, you shift your income. And that, that's our motto. Like, we do an event called Game Changer. And it's March 1st through 3rd this year. And I'm telling you guys, man, Friday night, the leadership, um, to get you mentally prepared, Saturday, finances, Sunday, business building. When you see that breakdown of all three days, just being around people, connecting with people, you got to shift your mindset and understand you are worth more than you getting paid right now. But the question is, what are you settling for? I just knew I was worth more. I, I, knew, I, I knew I was worth five figures a week. Because who's going to tell me I'm not? See? Your job is nothing wrong with it. You got to be thankful, but you're worth more than they're giving you. You know it, and I know it. You know it, and I know it. So, five figure checks, no problem. You got to learn how to do it. Put this in the comments. Game changer, ATL.com. We're going to do it big like we always do. And seating is limited, right? Because we, we wanted to be big enough where we have a lot of people, all the seats fill out. But we don't want it to be so big that you're not learning, right? So we're going to do some cool things as usual. Friday night leadership, Saturday all money and finances and wealth creation, and Sunday business building, interacting, the game shows, all the cool stuff that we do. So you got to get that in your head that, listen, I deserve more than I have right now. That's what I said to myself. And next thing you know, I was making more in a month than my job was paying me all year. From a home-based business, man. You start having thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars months. You start looking at things totally different than you do when you're making that annually. I can I can prompt you that I don't care what nobody said. So before we go, the third thing 
So now we've shifted our income by lowering our taxes. I went over that with the record keeping tonight and the government refund. You got to start thinking different about that. Now we took the tax dollars and the government said open a home based business and we'll give you even more deductions. So we took that philosophy. Now that we have some money because it came back from your sources. See, you, you got to get your money first back from the people who taking it from you. Y'all too busy out here trying to make more money. That's fine. But what about the one, the money you got bleed now? Can we get that first? Then you start getting compound interest and higher rates of return on your money. And guess what? Money pays the least amount of taxes. Let's get the watch party going. Money doesn't, look, money doesn't pay the taxes that labor pays. Money, appreciation, capital gains, dividends, doesn't pay the same high rate that wagers do. When you get that, you'll start having watch parties <laughs> because now the government set it up where because of that, I mean, because of that, because of that um, low tax rate, anywhere from 10 to 15 percent, 67 percent of all wealthy people's money is made with money. So that means not only they're making a lot of money because they're making it with money. And because they're making it with what's called non-wage income, it's not taxed the same. So how much of your money and your net worth is wage income and how much of your money and your net worth is non-wage income? And now you'll see how much you're giving away and how much you're keeping. Listen, man, do me a favor. Make sure you guys come back every night this week. First and foremost, plug into GameChangerATL.com. That's number one because that's the next People say, what's the next live event you're doing? It's March 1st through 3rd. GameChangerATL.com. Pre-registration is about to end uh, this month. The pre-registration discount ends. Second, come back tomorrow night and Thursday night. Tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. Thursday night, 9.30 Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. So we can keep breaking down different wealth building principles over this webinar series. In the meantime, somebody shared this with you. Somebody got this to you. If you're on my Facebook page and you know me personally and you don't have your membership, you can inbox me. I'll help you get it. The um, website is going to issue you a four-digit password and it'll help you unlock the key to your software, all the strategies, all the videos, hiring your children, all kind of cool stuff. But the person that introduced you will give you a direct link to them if they introduced you. If I introduced you, contact me. I'll be happy to help you. And we'll come back and have another watch party tomorrow. Have a good night.